Our guest speaker is none other than Pierre, who is one of the past, yes. <laughs> Pierre is one of the pastors here in Kingo's, among the others, and he has not, he's not a stranger to those of you who are at in-house because you've seen him preach for us before. He is a wonderful, wonderful man of God. Uh, he's a husband, he's a father, he's a pastor, and he's also a very good friend. So I just am so glad that I'm able to introduce him to you. He's got a message from the book of John, and uh, as he's preparing for it, he will be inviting Mary to come to read the text before we go into it. But before, without any further delay, I'd just like to hand the mic to him. Please, will you give him a hand? Thank you very much. I would like to return the compliment, dear friend Ravi. We, uh, you, I'd, I'd like to tell you that every Tuesday, we, have, we begin the week, sort of. Monday, the church is sort of closed. But Tuesday morning, we begin the week, and we meet up with all, all the employees of the church here. And when we have finished by that, we meet at Anas' office, our colleague Anas' office, and then we can hear somebody laughing and door slamming, and this is Ravi who comes. And we look forward to that. So we laugh a lot, we pray a lot, and we discuss a lot. It's, it's, it's very valuable time. So we spend time together every, every week, and we have grown into not only being colleagues, but into being friends, and very good colleagues. And it's, it's a blessing. So thank you very much, Ravi. Next Friday, something fun is coming up. This is uh, this time it is colleague Anas who invites colleague Ravi and colleague Carsten and colleague myself with ladies, with our ladies, uh, to his house for a festive dinner. So we will have fun and uh, laugh and spend time together. Yeah, yeah. So this is sort of part of being uh, uh, of being a pastor here. It is this very close relationship we have uh, with each other, for which I'm very grateful. Yeah. Yes. And I think this was enough. I would like to go to the text now. Please, come read it. I'm reading John 15, 1 to 12. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, it prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I, uh, as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and with us. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, and by this, we once again <clears throat> sort of land in the commandment of love. This is something in the very kernel of the existence of the church. Love, the commandment of love. The moment you enter the church and walk in by that door, that moment you become a secondary character in your own life. You can no longer be the main character. It is no longer about you. When you believe in Christ, you are sort of relieved 
from yourself and it's no longer about you. It's about the others. It's about love. And this love is mystical. It's a wonder. It's from out of this world. And it's so beautiful when you experience it in this world. It comes from the Father. The Father who loves his Son. And the Son, being loved by the Father, carried, carries his love further to us. He loved the world so much. And now, when we are together with him, he gives us the commandment of love. It's like, like a cascade of love. It's like a waterfall. It comes from the Father. The love pours, he pours out his love to his Son, who, driven by the love, pours the love of the Father out over us so that we sort of can live in a, live in a pool of love. And we love each other because we love Christ. Amen. It goes to reverse, who is loved by his Father and always has remained in, inside his love. Yeah. This is sort of a chain that we live in. Yes. Jesus says, I am the wine. What does he mean by that? He doesn't say that I'm like a wine tree. He says, I am the wine. Like he says in the Gospel of John, somewhere else he says, I'm the bread, the bread of life. He puts a, he says, I'm equal to bread, the bread of life. He doesn't say I'm sort of similar to, or that there are traits in the bread. The bread has characteristics which I have myself. He says, I am the bread. He doesn't say I am a bread or like the bread. I am the bread. And he says, I am the door. Not only is he a door or like a door, I am the door. What does he mean by these expressions? Our dear Lord, what does he mean? Let us start by the door. What I'm going to say something about is, is the wine, the image of wine. But a door, what is, what is a door? You can open a door and you can enter another room and then you can close the door and leave things behind which you don't want and close the door for things that you, yeah, you don't want people, the things you don't want to come in here. Okay. So this is what a door does. It helps us enter another space and leave something outside. And this is what Jesus does. He says, I am the door, because he is the door in the fullest sense of the word. He is the perfect door, the eternal door. He is the, the door to which, to watch which every door sort of points. Every door here we can open and close is sort of a witness to Christ. It points in his direction and reminds us about the real door, the fullest realization of the being of a door is Jesus Christ. Through him we enter another reality. The reality of the kingdom of God. Eternal life, beauty, goodness, love. We enter that through him. And behind us, outside of the door, when we close the door and leave behind us, death and sin, and hate, and anger. Everything that we would like to leave, live without, we leave it outside. He is indeed the door. Every door we see here in this room, there are a lot of doors. They are sort of, they're sort of miniatures of Jesus Christ, you would say. Okay. I am the bread. 
Jesus says, I am the bread of life. And once again, he doesn't say, I am like bread. He says, I am the bread. What does bread do? It gives us energy and strength. And it makes us feel good and happy. You know, it's a very nice thing to eat. It really is. Everybody, well, we can, we can, be, we can be in stress, we can be in stress or have worries, but when we sort of sit down and find our bread, there comes a smile and, and a glimpse in your eyes. That's what it, it brings joy. Joy and life and renews our strength. Yes, this is what bread does. Yes. <clears throat> and what about Jesus? Well, he is not only like a bread. He is the bread. By eating him, by taking his reality into our own reality, he gives us strength Amen. to overcome ourselves, to resist temptations, well, he wants to give us that strength. To fulfill God's plan with us. Strength to sort of fill our world, fill out our, uh, the role God wants to give us in the world. And contribute to the reality of others, what we have, what God intends us to do. We all have our talents and gifts, right? And God wants us to give them. He indeed is the bread, he is. And he who eats him shall never die. He is the bread of life. Okay. So when he says, I am the bread of life, it's not a, it's not a symbol. It's not a, an analogy. It's the reality. Jesus Christ is bread in its fullest realization is the full complete reality of bread and every other bread that we eat sort of points in the direction of Jesus Christ the bread that we eat it sort of participates in the reality of Jesus Christ it's a small part of his reality it's a in en miniature of his reality he is the bread Good. And now, the wine. I am the wine, you are the branches. I want you to bear fruit, he says. And once again, he doesn't say that I'm like a wine. He says, I am the What does a wine do to its branches? It sort of it takes up the, the water and nourishment from the soil and transforms it into, into, I don't know what it's called in English, but into this kind of juice that is in a living branch and sends it out into its branches so that they get leaves and they make small little knobs and they develop and the sun shines at them and they become very, very tasty fruits. We can take one of those and it's like a small explosion of something sweet and very, very nice. This is what a wine does. And this is what our Lord Jesus Christ does to us. He nourishes us. He gives us the energy. He sends his life force into us, like the juice in the wine. He does that. So please, stay close to him. Remain in him. Let his word remain in you. Don't, don't let yourself be cut off and, and leave him. Come on. You can see it, right? 
a branch which has been cut up. Oh, never do that. Never do that. Please remain in his word. Stay close to him. Seek his company. Fill yourself with his word. Go where there are beautiful songs singing to his praise. Be there where he is. And then you will grow and flourish and bear fruit because this is what comes out of it when you are connected to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His energy, his spirit will live in us. Yes, every one of us would strongly wish that his reality would be our reality in, in an even higher degree than it is naturally. Yes, we are here. We are here in this fallen world as fallen human beings. Yes, but remain in his word. Remain close to him. Don't let yourself be cut off. Never do that. No. Enjoy when you feel his joy and love in your spirit and in your hands and in your everything. Just enjoy it. See it and enjoy it. How his strength empowers you to do good things in the world. Yes. He is the wine. And we are his branches. By this, <clears throat> I sort of wanted to give you the key to the I am words in the Gospel of John. There are seven so-called I am words. Christ tells us that I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the way. And now, I think that you are able to reflect on this and to see what he means when he says, I am the way. What is a way? Okay, we have this way, it's a good, and he, he is the way in the fullest sense of the word. <clears throat> Deep beneath this way of speaking about himself is the mystery of creation. Everything in this world is created by, to, and from Christ. There, there has never been a time when he was not there. He has always been together with the Father, united in love. And when God decided to create this world, he created it by Christ. He was there. So the world is not a stranger to Christ. Everything we have here is sort of made through him with the purpose of worshiping him and witnessing about him. This is sort of what lies behind, deep, 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 deep down in the way Jesus speaks about himself and says, I am the wine. Because he really is that in the fullest imaginable sense. So, <clears throat> brothers and sisters, we have a wonderful Savior. Sometimes the gospel is so good, so mm, it, it sort of blow, it blows my mind sometimes that God is so good that not only gave, he gave this life to me to enjoy friendship and love and bread and wine and whatever, to yeah, the joys of this life. No, this is not enough for God. He wants to give us so much more. And he wants us to share in his reality. So he pours out his love over his son who brings his love to us. And because of his love to us, took away all our sins and gave us a new birth by the Holy Spirit and planted the seed of love into our heart.
hearts. Yes. So let us live in love, love each other. Let us be very patient with each other. Let us be willing to learn from the others how do I best love you? This is a very good question uh, to ask your spouse if you're married or your friend. How can I be the very best friend that you need? How can I be the husband that you need? How can I love you? Yes. So let us help each other along on the way of love and let us enjoy how fantastic it is to be a Christian. Amen. Blessed be the Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and in all eternity. Amen.